Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Voices of Syriac Faith. I'm Mary Rose. And I'm Stephanie Kala. And today we have Abuna Aziz Hadodo with us. How are you today? Thank God. Abuna, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? How long have you been a priest? What church do you serve at? Yes, sure. I was born in Midyat, which everybody spoke Syria over there when I was young. Um, I finished middle school and primary school and middle school in Midyat. Then I went to Mardin, uh, studied uh, high school there. And then I went to Istanbul. I studied civil engineering. Uh, from uh, when I finished uh, my civil engineering, I came to United States in 1972. And in the United States also, I, I, I received a degree from uh, construction technology, <clears throat> bachelor degrees. And then uh, 19, uh, 1994, yes, I uh, decided to become a priest. And uh, since then, I am a priest wow. at St. Gabriel's Church. God bless you, Abuna. Thank you. So before we start, would you mind leading us in a prayer, please? Sure. Shema Abu Abro Roha Hayo Kadisho Hadalo Shari Roamin. Our Lord and Father, the Creator of all, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a chance to get together with our youth to study your Bible, your word, and to try to transfer it to other people's hearts and minds. And thank you for giving us these chances. And please, Lord, Help us to translate your word the way you want us to understand it and translate it. Protect all our youth, your peace on earth, because we have a lot of issues on earth. And uh, protect all our families in the United States and all over the world and heal every broken heart. And your right hand stretch it out to every sick person and need your mercy. This we ask in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit, the one true God. Amen. Abuna. So today we're going to be speaking about the parable of building your house on the rock. Um, first, we just wanted to read those verses in the Bible. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 29. Hearing and doing Jesus' teachings. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them i will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock but everyone who hears these sayings a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Amen. Amen. So what does the phrase building your house on a rock mean? Looks like this phrase knew I was an engineer. (laughs) (laughs) Part of my job to build solid houses. Uh, in the old country, we used to build the houses. We used to dig up to the rock, go deep as far as it took. Uh, because the rock is solid. And uh, we didn't have cement. 2,000 years ago, there was no concrete. Mm-hmm. Thanks to uh, Portland brothers in England, there were two brothers, the ones who found the concrete, the cement. Uh, and uh, after than that, we didn't have to go dig dig deep to the deep rocks. And that, even the cement itself presents that rock. Solid foundation. Mm-hmm. Rock means solid foundation. Jesus is the solid foundation. Prior to that, uh, Matthew 16, Mark 8, and Luke 9, uh, we have uh, when Jesus went with his apostles to Caesarea Philippi- Philippos, he asked his apostles, whom the people think I am the son of man. Some of them said, you are John the Baptist. Some of them says, you are Jeremiah or El- 
Elijah or one of the old prophets. He says, whom do you think I am? So from among them, Peter, son of Jonah, his father's name was Jonah, he says, you are the son of the living God. He says, these words were told you by my heavenly father. What's the, what did he mean by that? Probably Peter even didn't know what he was saying. But something called the Holy Spirit whispered to him, you are the living uh, son of God. Jesus is God. That's what it means. That faith that Peter said, you are the son of God, that's our, our Christian faith, especially our Syriac Orthodox Church. This is the foundation we established our churches. Uh, the other meaning, Jesus is our, our God, the King of Kings, the God of Gods, whatever you want to tell him, uh, call him, but he is our Lord and God. Uh, that faith, we establish our churches, and the faith about the house, where we get back down to the house of Matthew 7, 24, 29. Jesus wants us to believe in him, to have faith in him. He says, whoever believes in me, have faith in me, uh, he'll have eternal life. And But if people do not believe in him, they're already judged. People that do not, do not have faith in me, if they don't build their life, you know, their life, the house here is the life itself, uh, will have nothing to do with me. So he's telling us to have faith in him, build our life, our family's lives, on upon the faith of Peter, upon the rock that is Jesus Christ. The rock, rains come, winds blows, uh, um, rivers, it's solid rock. Nothing will happen to that house. But the houses that were built on a weak foundation, on a soil or, or, or sand, anytime rain comes, uh, um, clears that soil, doesn't have the capacity to hold the house, and that house will fall, and its fall will be a, a very uh, dangerous, very uh, with great uh, fall. The destruction, it will fall to his destruction. So Jesus wants us to have faith in him and follow his example. I think that this parable is very easy to kind of misunderstand. Yes. And because we might think that Christ is speaking about a literal house when he is speaking about our spiritual foundation. Exactly. And it's such an important parable because one day on judgment day, we're all going to be standing before Christ and he's going to be seeing if we have built our house or our spiritual foundation, mm -hmm. whether on rock or on sand. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Uh, Christianity, unfortunately, deluded. It's, we are, I don't feel as a community or as a nation or as a world, <laughs> we are holding the faith that Jesus is expecting from us. Mm -hmm. People are going, trying to go to the easy ways, but the easy way is still Jesus. People do not realize it. I'll give you an example. Jesus tells us not to steal. But if they ask to an average person, there is a million dollars, we don't know who, who, who does it belong. What do you think? He'll go grab it, steal it, and, and run away. Yeah. He's not going to say, no, I'm not supposed to steal. See, he thinks... The money that he steals is easier than earning it. It's not. If you earn the money by your own strength, uh, with your own belief, you can live a better life. And, and most likely people that steal or, or does wrong things, they get caught. And th then they'll have a miserable life. The devil always comes to people in the name of peace, in the name of love, in the name of money, in the name of uh, every good thing. But at the end, all he does gives them misery, makes them miserable, mm -hmm. unfortunately. But uh, there are a lot of people that follow the devil's footsteps. God gave us both ways, good and bad. He, he, he kept it to us. It's up, it is up to us to pick up the right way. The decision-making is ours. The choice is ours. God never tells us to, to pick up the wrong uh, choice, but it is up to us. Now, the devil, okay, can come and tempt us to do the wrong things. But 
God gave us enough strength we can stop the devil. He gave us definitely to all of us. We can stop the devil. Uh, in many cases, you see that some people think, okay, if I am a millionaire, I'll become happy. He have a nice body, I'll be happy. If I have an expensive car, I'll be happy. It's not true. If you're not happy with what you get, you have, you'll never be happy no matter what you have. The, another, the other day I heard somebody was, says, I called my friend. I have five children and I'm happy. And my friend has $5 million. He is not happy. He wants to make it six. See? And, and then he asks to become 10 million, 20 million, 100 million. It becomes miserable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know money is not, um, uh, it, it's not somebody's fault. Money can help you, save you. Money can destroy you. So it's up to us again. The show is ours. The money that help with is yours. The money you keep to your, just to yourself or the, the money, whatever you have. If you just keep it to yourself, you build yourself home on earth, a treasury, treasury on earth. But if the money you share with needy people makes you treasure in heaven, it's very important. Uh, we can earn the good and the bad with the money, with the power. You know, money is power. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is, can be the beginning of all evil also, the money can. So yeah. we should, our blessings God gives us, we should share with others also. Exactly. A lot of people that uh, thinks they'll be happy with fortune, with earthly blessings. But you know, a lot of them can't enjoy life anymore. Yeah. Someone becomes so rich, uh, ex- excuse the impression, but they then they say, okay, maybe I should turn to Far Eastern religions, Buddhism and other Confucius and Maoism. Maybe I may, I'll be happy. No. And then they, they, uh, they say, they become gay. No, I'm not happy again. Then drugs. Maybe the drugs will make me happy. The devil doesn't smoke. You'll be happy. Maybe a few seconds you feel high, then you become miserable. I know, I read, all of us, we hear stories. A lot of people that went on drugs ended up killing themselves, Mm -hmm. committing suicide. So the best way, again, the easiest way, the cheapest way is Christ's way. When we enjoy it, we will enjoy it and we'll we'll want to stick with it. Build our life on on Christ's foundation. Uh, there is no other. Jesus Himself, what He told us in the Bible, no other. Nobody else to, uh, mentioned. Jesus said, "I am life. I am the way. I am resurrection. I am. I am. I am. I am the way to my Father. Uh, when you have faith in Me, you'll be with Me." Nobody else told us these things. No, nobody. None of the other religions. No Mao. No Confucius. No nobody, because they couldn't. He gave us seven sentences like that. I am the light of the world. My yoke is light. So we should stick with what our fathers and mothers and grandfathers gave us. Okay, we are Christian. We were born Christian. But we have to understand the meaning of Christianity and try to help others also bring them closer to Jesus. Some people do not know what we know. We are lucky. You know what it is, Christians, like like if you are at high school, the teacher gives you the questions in advance. Next week you have you have tests. Here are the questions. Mm-hmm. You'll be happy, right? Yeah. Easy to make 100. Is that 100 at the high point? Here, he gave us the, the questions yeah. and the answers. So he gave us also a long, long time to know these questions and answers. Not every, every human being lucky like us. There are some people who do not know. I said before I became a priest, I was not a nervous person. I wasn't. But since I became a priest, I read a lot. The scripture, the word of God. Now I cannot get upset with anybody. I don't take things personal anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were things also that I learned through the the Bible. I didn't know they were sin. Mm -hmm. You know? But now I'm more protected. I, I, I know how to act. I try to be a better person. I like how you mentioned before that God never tries to force us to do something to follow him, you know, in any way. 
But he, like you said, he warns us in the Bible. He's telling us exactly what we need to do, exactly how we should follow him. Um, and especially in this parable, he's telling us you need to do the things that, like you need to act exactly. as a Christian. You can't just call yourself a Christian and then think that everything will be okay. Sometimes people say, how do I, you know, I don't know if God speaks with me. But it is very, very sure, definitely. When we pray, we talk to God. When we read his word, he talks to us. Mm -hmm. That's how he talks to us. Mm -hmm. It's got the Bible. Do this, don't do that. Like you just mentioned yourself. He, he gives us all of the instruction we read. Simplifies it in more than one place, by the way. And in order to understand the Bible, we have to read not just one verse. Don't you? Uh, establish your uh, judgment only on one verse. It can be misleading, you know. Mm -hmm. For instance, sometimes, and, and some people don't even complete even that uh, verse. They just say something. Uh, one time, some uh, non-Christians told me, oh, Jesus also says, I, I brought the sword. I came to put sword on earth, not peace. Yeah, I said, why don't you continue in the next sentence? What does the next sentence say? I said, no, no. Do they have to read it? <laughs> of course you have to. Because it says, for me, families will be divided. You, not you, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> I mean, some members of the family will believe in Jesus, some will hate. Yes. Yeah. So what will happen? Sword, fight. You know, this is, this is what he says. For my sake, some families may have issues, but stick with it. Stick with it. I, I baptized more than 10 people that they were not Christian, but I do Bible study with them five, six months till they have to be believers. And I show them the Bible, I show them their books, you know, and uh, those people, most of them now still continue in the church, married Christian people. Some of them have daughters and sons who work in a Sunday school, married Christian again. So thank God, thank God. Uh, we, we have to be careful. We live in a time of we are surrounded like fire, especially the youth. Mm -hmm. The youth, uh, uh, I feel some, sometimes, not sorry, but I, I worry about the yeah. youth because they're surrounded with a, a lot of uh, not so good stuff. The devil comes to us with a name of good stuff and he's agents, by the way. The other day, I, I, I saw a clip about Hollywood. I don't did they make a movie? Maybe you know better than I. They say <clears throat> they're thanking the devil on a stage. He has his cop that he uh, it was uh, the end of the year at the movie actors for the what they call it that they received awards. The Oscars. The Oscars. Huh? The Oscars. Oscars. Mm -hmm. He says thank you. He's thanking the devil that he made them with that cop. Oh he God. says, Now this is my God. One a lady says, This is my God now. My God, you know, can you imagine that we came to such... So the movies, Hollywood, and other things are the devil's agents. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, the devil gives us the bad thing. The worst thing gives it to us. After, at the end, these are the worst. Jesus, in the beginning, gives us the good. The better gives us next. And, and the best gives us at the end. Yeah. If we earn the whole world... And if you lose our, our soul, our spirit, what is it good for? Our life on earth is maximum 100 years. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you compare the 100 years to, to um, everlasting life, it's like take a glass of water from the ocean, if that. So we should uh, bear, uh, be patient, and try to stick with our belief. Jesus said that whoever can uh, be patient, stay till the end. It'll be with me. Don't don't be in rush in your your faith. Be scared. Uh, some people, if they say, "Okay, if you don't change your religion, I'll kill you." Yeah. You know, that shouldn't scare us. Our parents, grandparents, uh, during the safe and other times, they never gave up Jesus. Jesus said, "If you deny me, I'll deny you in front of my Father in heaven. If you uh, don't deny me, I'm not gonna deny you." Me and his angels, he'll be with me in his heavenly kingdom.
So we also wanted to read Luke chapter 6, verses 46 to 49, because it also mentions the parable as well. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, three Bibles mention the similar thing. We call them synoptic Bibles. Matthew, Mark, Luke are synoptic. There's a similarity. They were written in the uh, same age and time and in a similar area. But John is separate from them because John... Uh, he, he, he was sent to uh, Ephesus, present-day Izmir in Turkey, and they put him in jail there. Uh, and uh, he wrote the Bible there in Greek, by the way, mm -hmm. because where he lived, the, Greek, the, the language was Greek. Matthew was written in Syriac, Aramaic. Mark, Luke, and uh, John in Greek languages. Mark was Greek. Luke was Greek. was a physician. Luke was a doctor. But John, he, he was Jew, but uh, because of where he was, he thought he's writing in Greek. Uh, more people would read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation, against which the stream beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. Yeah, Matthew and Luke are the two uh, Bibles that contains this parable. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark and John didn't write about it, but uh, it's very similar. Uh, it tells us similar things, the same things practically. If you own, own the whole world, and if you lose your spirit, what is it good for? If you continue. So Jesus wants us to build our homes, our spiritual homes, on, on a solid foundation. Uh, now, some areas, there is no rock, like I said in the beginning. Yeah. So we, we made a man-made rock, the concrete, the cement. So that's rock also, solid, physical foundation. But uh, Jesus is wants our faith to be placed on, on a solid rock that doesn't shake, which is Jesus himself. Uh, if you earn the whole world, what is the good for us? When we die, nobody takes anything with him with her. Mm -hmm. This is for all of us. By the way, whatever the Bible told us 2,000 years ago, he's telling us the same thing now. 2,000 years later, it's going to tell us the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, And it's written beautifully. It's written for all men and women, for the youth, for everybody. Uh, if we have to continue, I can say, what should we do? Now, we are living in a world that... Uh, uh, Christianity deluded. It looks like we, we had ink before in the bottles. I don't know if you had them or not. We used to take pen, make it from uh, wood and from other things, stick it in and start writing. But sometimes it used to be very dark. We wanted to be lighter. We used to add water to it. And now Christianity became like we had black, blue, and red ink. It's You can hardly tell the color anymore. Deluded so much. People became selfish. People became ignorant. They don't care about others. Uh, when, we, when there is a, a, a successful person, we should be happy for them, especially for our own people. We cannot come to their level. Oh, let's pull their leg to come to our level. This is wrong. We should be happy. We should not concentrate just on, what to, on people that are better than us. Comes to some people that don't have that have less than we have. There is a short story about uh, what's his name, uh, <clears throat> Romeo and Juliet, uh, the writer of Romeo and Juliet, uh, Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Shakespeare, when he was a little boy, they were poor. Comes from a poor family, and he he didn't have shoes. He used to walk bare, bare feet, barefoot, and one day his feet start hurting. Crying, says, Lord, is it too much to ask for a pair of shoes? 
And then he started walking. A couple blocks down, he saw somebody, no legs at all. Then he mm-hmm. says, Lord, thank you. At least I have my own food, mm-hmm. my own feet. A lot of people in Africa are starving to death. We have much more than we need. St. Paul says, no matter what situation you are, thank your Lord. Be thankful. And this is, should be our policy. We should thank. And we see somebody less fortunate stretch our hand to help them, not step all over them. Mm-hmm. I mean, if people have more than I do, so what? I wish all of my parishioners were millionaires. I'll benefit too somehow. <laughs> Definitely I'll benefit. But even if I don't. So, I mean, it's a... Uh, uh, we start. We should start from the young age. Our children train them. God willing, when you get married, you have children. From the beginning, instill the love of Christ in their heart. Raise them in a church from the young age. If you don't take them to church when they're young, when they grow, they're not going to go. Yeah. Definitely. They have to uh, learn to go to church from this age. We should insulate the children, not isolate them. They are not birds. We cannot put them in cages. But insulate them when they go out there so the society won't take over them. Instead of being led, they can lead some other people closer to Jesus. So they should have friends. They should uh, be able to make friends. But uh, they should have the knowledge to protect their faith, to protect themselves, to stick to that uh, the rock. And Jesus says, anybody it's connected to me will be fruits. St. James, what does it say? The faith. What's the faith? We say, okay, we believe in Christ. We love Jesus. But the true faith is the one that is proved by our uh, uh, deeds. J- James, son of Joseph, in his, uh, four or fifth both, uh, chapters, his letter to the faithful. He says, if you say, I have faith, show me your deeds. Faith without it is dead. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, you, when you look at the mirror, you see yourself. When you remove your face, you forget what you look like. So that's the wrong faith. When you when, uh, First you learn. Teach others and practice in your life. Be a good example to others. In that case, okay, Bible. Every house should have Bible. Mm-hmm. We do. I believe every house has Bible. But do we really read the Bible? So, and the Bible, by the way, should be a Bible that our Syria Orthodox Church books. Because some denominations, they change things around. Yeah. Because I was listening to Father Marutha the other day uh, with, with you. Um, Luke chapter, uh, chapter 17, verse 21. They removed that some of them from the Bible, where it says, that's kind of a disease being healed with prayers and fasting. It is true. Someone took it, hid it somewhere because some, some denomination don't teach uh, uh, fasting anymore. So they removed. Verse 21, if you read it, it's removed. They have 20, they have 22. Uh, when I have chance, you can look at So we should, like King James, even King James, some of them, they removed that, uh, believe it or not. Our church produces some books, Bibles, try to use them. Uh, another thing, when we have Bible in a house, we should encourage people to read it. If you can make it to a Bible study in a family, that's even greater. Charity starts from the home. When you start praising Jesus, teach Lord from within first. Now, there is a story, short story. It's about a family inviting a priest. Uh, they were very happy the priest accepted their invitation. He went for, to eat with them. And then at the, at the end of the evening, uh, prayers and stuff, they, uh, they, were, they had a wonderful evening. And then, you know, it's traditional church. They gave them an envelope. They put it there on the table. And they discuss. They mentioned, do you read the Bible? Said, sure, sure. We read every night. You know, at least once a day. And it's, bring me the Bible. Let me see the Bible. And they brought the Bible. He looked said, oh, good. Put the Bible on the table. And when when it came time to, to leave, left, you know, he was very happy, and they were very happy. They left their house. I <laughs> Probably know another story. Right? Okay. I have a feeling that. Yeah, yeah. So, 
after he left, the woman says, we forgot to give that envelope to, to, to the father. They looked around, no, no envelope. He said, probably he took it. But that's shame. Why should he take it? You know, we were going to give it to him anyways. Mm-hmm. Okay. The man says, okay, forget it. I mean, if he took it, he took it. No. She, she wonders. She says, I'm going to tell Abuna. So one day, she says, Abuna, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know how to say that. I'm uh, embarrassed. So go ahead. Don't worry. She says, a month later, she, she says, Father, there was an animal. We're going to give it to you. Do you know what happened to him? Did you take it? Or He says, no, it's in a Bible that you've been reading every night. The Bible that you've been reading every night. Mm-hmm. What embarrassment. Huh? Yeah. Wow. He says, in the other meaning, if they read that Bible, one more time they would find it. They were found it. <laughs> so, and another occasion at the Bible study, the teacher, the priest, told the kids, says, go read the, for next week, prepare Mark 17. Book of Mark 17, chapter 17. And the following week came, he says, did you read uh, Mark chapter 17? They didn't. Nobody raised their hand. He says, well, probably they didn't read it. Okay. Then two friends said, you know what? Let's raise our hand. It's shame. He gave us a duty. At least let him feel good that we did what he told us. They raised their hand. We read it. He says, no, you didn't read it either. <laughs> <laughs> they say, what do you mean? How do you know? Okay, we didn't read it, but how did you know? He said, because there is no Mark 17. <laughs> it's only 16 chapters. <laughs> Who are we kidding? Kidding ourselves? So, yeah. So I like in the beginning of um, Luke chapter 6, verse 46, mm-hmm. Jesus is saying, but why do you call me Lord, Lord? Yes. He says, but why do you call me Lord, Lord? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them i will show you who he is like i like it because i mean we do it all the time like we always jesus is god we believe in god we're christians you know we come to church but do we actually like why do we call him lord do we truly believe that he's lord or are we gonna start acting like christians are we gonna start listening to his teachings and doing them we hope that everybody says, Lord, Lord, means it. But of course, we are weak. We sin every day. We should repent every day. We should uh, concentrate on really what it means. Read the Bible. If you don't read the Bible, we make more mistakes. When we read the Bible, follow Bible studies. Uh, as When I became a, a, a priest, the first thing I did, I knew we were lacking Bible studies. I studied Bible study in, in St. Gabriel in Hackensack. Father Mino had like a very small group, uh, wonderful man. He loved to see people go, but he wasn't lucky like we were. We were blessed. I had 65 students at my Bible studies because people are thirsty for it. And they were newcomers also because I used to see in Europe a lot of our youth goes to Jehovah Witnesses, New World Christians, and this and that. They go under different names and separate from our churches. So I kept the youth busy with sports, with uh, Bible studies. We had uh, tournaments, all kind of sports. Bowling tournament, I used to play with them too. We had 120 uh, youth playing and as much watching. A lot of youth got married even from there. I, I am witness to it. And the Bible study, same thing. We had a lot of couples that got married in a Bible study. Uh, and uh, then the students like Thomas Berhe, Jean Alpa, and these are all the first students we had. They started even going to with other groups also outside. They do Bible studies. I don't know uh, every, everything, but they became teachers themselves and now spread to other churches. Thank God now all of our churches have Bible studies. Yeah. This is our victory. Uh, Jesus is telling us, Okay, if we don't mean it, we should not say, Lord, Lord. God tells us in Isaiah and other places, he says, your mouth says, Lord, Lord, but your heart is far from me. He wants our heart to be close to him, not our, uh, not our, on our mouth. In the other meaning, it's like we're lying. We don't mean it. We, again, we come back to James. James tells us, prove it. 
you know, when I see, if you say I love the poor people, and you are doing the, the otherwise, you hurt the poor people, you're doing things that uh, no good for them, that means you know, this doesn't show. That's a, not a true faith. True faith is the faith that is being proved with your... Uh, you know what it looks like? When Jesus went to Jerusalem, you remember uh, he saw a fig tree? Mm-hmm. The last week of his life on earth? Yes. Right. He, he didn't find any fruits in it. And he cursed it. And it dried. He, oh, what he tells us, sometimes some people look nice, dressed and everything, but no faith, no fruits, no, no, no deeds. So they are similar to that fig tree. What Jesus is telling to tell us here, a person does not produce fruits at the end will be thrown in fire. I hope nobody goes to hell. The whole humanity I love to see go to heaven, myself personally. But uh, this is the truth. I mean, God is loving God, but he's a just God also. If he, if he, if he sent his son, only begotten son Jesus, to be crucified, died on the cross, he'll do it for us too. But uh, he's a, 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 a great God. He's a compassionate God, loving God. In a, in a book of Isaiah, again, it says, he's not going to say why, why you sinned, why you did not repent. We all sin. We are weak. We are not uh, that strong. But he'll tell us why you didn't repent. No matter how, how big sinners we are, when we repent, come to him with a good intention, with good, good deeds, he'll accept us. Over here also, we should not just by, by words say, Lord, I love you. But uh, we should try to serve him truthfully, help those of the least. Uh, go visit some people in jail, in the hospitals. Uh, go try to mend a broken heart. To me, the, the way to heaven goes from the tears of people that are trying to fix other people's broken heart goes to, through people who are willing to accept Jesus from all their heart, you know, is our Lord, our, our God. So we should help others also. We should not keep everything just for ourselves. Me, me, me world. Uh, also, one thing that I see on earth reduced is uh, love, justice, patience, faith, kindness, mercy, this commodity is reduced a lot on earth. I'm going to tell you a sample here. I, actually, I said the story this morning in church also. But it is good. I think it's worth to be recorded again. They take a man to heaven, like me, like you, average person. He sees that heaven is so beautiful. The angels are serving. The atmosphere, everything wonderful. And he, he calls one of the angels... He says, what do you sell here? What are you selling here? He says, we sell uh, love, justice, patience, faith, kindness, mercy. Wow, he says, these commodities are reduced on earth. Can I buy some of those? The angel says, as much as you want. He says, okay, can I have 500,000 tons of love, 400,000 tons of justice, patience, and kindness, mercy? He says, as much as you want. So, the, the angel goes, takes the order, and this guy says, wait a minute, what am I doing? He says, I, when I saw uh, the commodities, these commodities are reduced on earth, I got carried away. How am I going to take this uh, with me to heaven, to earth? Th- hundreds of thousands of tons of them. Then, before he finishes, the angel comes with a little bag. Our great-grandparents used to carry it out of fabric, put their change in it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So he says, here's your order. And the guy look at the bag, look at the angel, look at the bag, look at the angel. Says, What's this? He says, I, I order millions of tons of stuff. He says, here in heaven, we sell the seeds of those commodities. You take them to earth, plant them in a people's hearts. Over oh, there become the millions of tons that you ask for. In the other meaning, we have those commodities, the, the seeds of those. We, we all have it. So we have to do, carry it across try to implant it to people's hearts so we can all 
love one another. We can all help each other. Pray for each other. Create a better world. When I became a priest, somebody asked me, says, are you going to try to take people to heaven? I said, I'll try to make the world look like heaven if I can. You know, if we can make a difference, then everybody will be happy, both on earth and in heaven. And our Lord will be happy with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to spread his word as much as we can so that God bless you. Other people are doing his work, That's right. not just us. Because Jesus, when he, before he ascended to heaven, what did he do? He blessed the apostles. He says, go all over the world. Spread the word. Preach my word. And once they believe, become faithful, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But make sure they believe. Not like somebody comes to, to, to marry a Syrian girl, a Syrian girl, and Okay, God bless you. We baptize you. Now you're a Christian. So we have uh, to make sure the people that we baptize, they, they, they become faithful. One lady I baptized from Turkey. Now she's reading the Bible to young ladies who come to college in the United States. Her daughter is a um, teacher at the high, uh, Sunday school, and she married a Christian guy. And the woman still teach, teaching the Bible to the best of her ability. So it's important. We should spread the word. By the way, we have to win the war with love, not with fight, not with arguments. Again, I went to Turkey to one of the churches. They had a mass uh, liturgy. They asked me, are you going to celebrate liturgy? I said, no, I am visiting. A young lady came, tall, very well dressed, and she's putting her back towards me like that. I thought maybe she's uh, uh, from a television or something. She's probably recording my voice. So I don't mind. Even if she put me on national television, I'll say the same things. She says, what's Christianity? We have to love everyone. And uh, no matter what nationality, no matter what. Then she said, how about if somebody tried to hurt you? Will you still love them? I said, those people, you pray for them. Yeah. She says, what do you mean? I said, person that hurts you, maybe don't know what they're doing, he or she. Then if you pray for, for that person, God will open the, her heart, her mind, or his, to realize they're wrong, they may even come apologize from you. Pray for them. She starts crying. Then I knew she has uh, stress. She's under stress, under pressure. I said, looks like you're under pressure. There are some Bibles. If take one and read it, it will relax you. And she did. She went and picked up a Bible from there and took it home. And I am almost sure that lady probably changed her direction towards the Bible. Uh, because the Bible is all good. Nothing that in a Bible. It's all nice, love, respect. So just to finish off, yeah. we have we just wanted to ask you what would be some advice that you were you would give to listeners or people who are starting out in their faith or maybe somebody who is a Christian but left and is now trying to get back into it to build a firm foundation, a strong foundation? Well, to begin with, don't give up. Jesus always is our friend. When everyone walks out on you, he walks in on you. Keep that in mind. Jesus is your friend. Now, Jesus has been showing himself to non-Christians right and left. A lot of countries, we have a lot of people convert to Christianity. Because they are asking Christ, Lord, show me yourself. And who, who shows himself? Jesus shows himself to them. So, Jesus is close to all of us. He loves us to, to knock on his door. He knows what we need. But he wants us to ask him. Knock on the door will be open to you. Uh, ask will be given to you. God's delays may not be his denial. It's not his denial. He, he, what we ask may not be right for us. He'll give us what's right spiritually for us. And that our time and his time is different. He has his own time and place. And if you are sorry, God expects you to, to be sorry and come back to him. 
like a few minutes ago, I said, it's not going to say why you sinned. It's going to say why you did not repent. Mm -hmm. Repentance is the name of the game for all of us Christians. And as for help sometimes from a, a church leader, from friends that uh, really loves you. But like I said, even if you don't fight any friend, Jesus is your best friend. He never leaves you alone. Remember the footsteps at the, at the desert, at the beach? Somebody's mm -hmm. dreaming. When he was down, Jesus came with, walking with him. Four steps, you know, two of his footsteps and two of Jesus' footsteps. And after a while, Two of them disappeared. He says, Lord, when I was down to my low spot, you left me alone. We only had two footsteps there. He said, no, child. He said, when you were at your lowest, I was carrying you. Those are my footsteps. So Jesus will never abandon us. He's always with us. Uh, don't give up. Stick with what uh, with, with Jesus' love. Jesus' love is wonderful. He loves us all. We are all his children, his brothers and sisters on earth. We are lucky. He he called us children, our children. Yeah, I think a lot of times that some people expect immediate relief or immediate rewards. And then when they don't get that, they're like, okay, clearly this religion isn't the true religion. When realistically, Christ loves us so much that he doesn't give us what we want exactly right away. He might give us this little lesson that will teach us and that will help us grow either ourselves grow spiritually or maybe grow and help others get closer to Christ himself. Jesus is not the genie in a bottle yeah. that we have to keep in mind. And a few minutes ago I said his delays are not his denials. Maybe it was for the wrong thing. We do not know. We don't know everything. See, we read, we study, we learn a lot, but we do not know everything. Why young people dies? Why old people dies? Why this? Why that? Why we do not get right away? Maybe it was for the wrong thing. When you pray for somebody, he'll give you two. When you ask for spiritual things, you'll get it faster. But uh, if you go say, Lord, I want a million dollars. This is a silly request. Maybe that million dollars will, will hurt you. So there is a Bible study. There was a Bible study. The teacher was telling his students, listen, he said, for God, a second and a million is the same, and a penny and a million dollars are the same. So one of the students told his friend, says, let's go have coffee at Dunkin' Donut today. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> cut it short. <laughs> okay, they go to Dunkin' Donut, have their coffee. He says, what do you think? Is it true that what the priest was telling us? A penny and a million dollars for God is the same, and a, se a, a second and a million years the same. Of course, it says God. Okay, it says then I go home early. <laughs> he, he left his friend also, went home, he went to his room, locked the door. He says, Is it true, Lord? A second and a million years for you is the same, and a penny and a million dollars. He says, Yes, it is. Please give me one of your pennies, Lord. <laughs> and he says, Wait a second. His second also is a million years. He says, Wait, wait, wait a second. God is answering. So if you ask silly question, he'll give you a silly answer, you know. But uh, God never lies. And uh, we, we know that. We all know that. Uh, I mean, the stories we tell, you learn from them, you know. <laughs> it's okay. Jesus was talking with parables. Some people may not like it when we tell stories like that or you know. But a lot of people like it. Why not? I mean, we, we cannot be under pressure when we do our Bible studies. Or something. We have to laugh. We have to be happy. Todi Abuna, thank you so much for your beautiful words. Would you mind just closing us out in a prayer, please? Sure. I also thank you for inviting me today being here. This is a really real pleasure for me. And uh, I'm sure some people benefit from it, <laughs> we hope. Yes, we hope we so I always so. say, if even one person benefits from what I said, I'll consider myself happy. May the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one true God, amen. Our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us a chance to voice ourselves your word. Please, Lord, open the heart of anybody and everybody that's going to watch or listen to this message. Um, Put it in their heart 
give us the wisdom to all of us, all the time, to be able to understand your word the way you want us to understand the Lord. Give, fill up our heart, our broken, contrite hearts, fill them up with your love. Everybody needs a leader in, our, in their lives. We want you to be our leader in our life, Lord, and be a leader to all of our youth and protect them from the evil and his uh, uh, ways. Uh, and please, Lord, give us the love, the compassion when we see someone fall down so we can grab them from their arms and lift them up. And Lord, please, stretch out your right hand, the one at, at the, uh, that you stretched to bless your disciples at the mountain of Olives. Bless all of the broken hearts. All of the people needs your mercies. All of the sick people on earth, Lord. And put your peace again on earth so we can all live in peace and tranquility. This we ask him of the Father and Son, Holy Spirit, one should God. Amen. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is kingdom, power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you all. Your families and your loved ones. Thank you so much for joining us today on Voices of Syriac Faith. We hope you enjoyed this episode just as much as we did. If you have any topics you'd like us to cover or guests you'd love to hear from, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram DM at Voices of Syriac Faith. New episodes are released every Wednesday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Until next time, may God bless you and may his light guide your path and remember you are never alone in your journey of faith.